director unleashes a film that's like a lightning bolt striking the heart of Hollywood. Andrew Dominic's Blonde didn't just hit the screens, it shook the entire industry to its core. With its raw portrayal of Marilyn Monroe's life, it wasn't long before critics were sharpening their claws and audiences were taking sides. But in the middle of the chaos, Dominic stood firm, unapologetic, and ready to challenge the very essence of modern filmmaking. As accusations of misogyny and exploitation flew, Dominic remained unfazed, daring to ask, in a world of woke insanity, is there still room for raw truth in Hollywood? When Andrew launched Blonde onto the streaming screens, it was like tossing a lit match into a haystack soaked in gasoline. The reaction? Explosive to say the least. Let's dive into the opinions that are brewed around this film. Picture this. On one side of the ring, you have fans of Dominic's raw and unapologetic filmmaking style, hailing Blonde as a masterful dissection of Marilyn Monroe's life. They're raising their glasses, toasting Dominic's daring approach to storytelling. But on the other hand, it's a different story altogether. Critics and viewers alike are throwing punches, accusing the film of everything but the kitchen sink. Now, here's where things get spicy. Critics weren't just whispering sweet nothings into Dominic's ear. They were flinging some pretty hefty accusations. Misogyny. Check. Sexism? Double check. Exploitation? You betcha. According to some, Dominic wasn't just dissecting Monroe's life, he was gleefully dancing on her grave, reveling in her pain for the sake of shock value. But Dominic wasn't about to roll over and play dead. When confronted with the barrage of criticism, he didn't flinch. He brushed it off like a speck of dust on his shoulder. He stated that he's excited, yet vulnerable at the same time in his Australian accent. Excited, but I also feel vulnerable, you know? Uh, a little bit vulnerable. In Dominic's eyes, the naysayers were missing the point entirely. He wasn't interested in tiptoeing around delicate sensibilities or sugarcoating the harsh realities of Monroe's life. Nope. He was here to ruffle feathers and shake things up, which brings us to the film festival. Dominic isn't one to mince words, and when he took the stage at the Red Sea Film Festival in Jeddah, he didn't hold back. Let's break down his no-holds-barred commentary and see what the man had to say. When faced with a barrage of criticism over his film Blonde, Dominic didn't bat an eyelash. In his signature laid-back Aussie style, he shrugged off the negativity like it was water off a duck's back. Criticism only hurts if you agree with it, he quipped as if to say, I couldn't care less what you think. Beneath the surface, there was more to Dominic's response than meets the eye. He wasn't just brushing off the criticism, he was challenging the very notion that artists should tiptoe around sensitive topics to avoid offending. Back then, being politically correct wasn't exactly the norm. Nah, Aussies, they're known for being a bit rough around the edges, you know what I mean? And Dominic, well, he's as Aussie as they come. So he's all about authenticity, not walking on eggshells just to please everyone. That's just not his style. He's more like, say it like it is, mate. Growing up in that era, offending someone wasn't seen as this big taboo like it is now. It was more like a rite of passage. You said what you thought, no sugarcoating, no beating around the bush. Take Hollywood, for example. It's all about political correctness there, right? But not for Dominic. He's got this Aussie spirit, this pride in his roots, and he wears it like a badge of honor. He's not gonna water down his words just to fit in with the crowd. Nope, he'll say what he thinks, even if it ruffles a few feathers. That's just how he rolls. And you know what? people respect him for it. Sure, he might rub some folks the wrong way with his bluntness, but at least you know where you stand with him. No beating around the bush, no hiding behind polite words. It's refreshing, really. In Dominic's world, authenticity trumps political correctness any day of the week. Ah yes, the land down under. It's no secret that Australians have a reputation for being a bit blunt, and Dominic is no exception. Growing up in Melbourne in the 80s, he came of age in a time when offending your audience was practically a rite of passage. It's a far cry from the politically correct landscape of Hollywood, and Dominic wears his Aussie heritage like a badge of honor. From his perspective, being Australian gives him the freedom to tackle taboo subjects head on without worrying about stepping on anyone's toes. It's this unapologetic approach to filmmaking that sets him apart from the crowd and makes his work so darn compelling. But Dominic didn't stop there. 
Oh no, he had plenty more to say, and American cinema was firmly in his crosshairs. In his eyes, Hollywood has become a shadow of its former self, a shell of what it once was. Instead of pushing boundaries and challenging audiences, it's fallen into a comfortable rut of conservatism and predictability. Gone are the days of lively discourse and meaningful debate. Instead, American cinema has devolved into a never-ending stream of cookie-cutter films that spoon-feed audiences the same tired tropes and cliches. It's a sorry state of affairs, and Dominic isn't afraid to call it like he sees it. His commentary at the Red Sea Film Festival was more than just a few off-the-cuff remarks. It was a rallying cry for filmmakers everywhere to break free from the shackles of political correctness and embrace their inner provocateur. And if anyone can lead the charge, it's Andrew Dominic. I think it's just a movie. Do you know what I'm saying? Of course. I think it's one of many, and they'll probably make more. The film is about the meaning of Marilyn Monroe. From where he's standing, it seems like the world is becoming more and more uptight by the minute. People are walking on eggshells, afraid to speak their minds for fear of offending. Someone, and that just doesn't sit right with Dominic. Growing up in Melbourne in the 80s, he saw firsthand the importance of pushing boundaries and challenging the status quo. It's a lesson he's carried with him throughout his career, and it's more relevant now than ever before. But here's where things get juicy. Dominic isn't just concerned about societal conservatism, he's worried that it's seeping into every nook and cranny of the film industry. In his eyes, contemporary cinema has become nothing more than a series of glorified bedtime stories. You know the ones I'm talking about? The movies where you can predict every twist and turn before it even happens. Did you ever feel that the film was not gonna cross the finish line? I felt many times that the film was not going to get across the finish line. There, there were times where I felt like it was going to get across the finish line and it would collapse. And uh, it broke my heart many times. Well, that brings us to the crux of the matter. Dominic is downright fed up with the current state of filmmaking, and who can blame him? He's tired of seeing the same old tropes and cliches trotted out time and time again. He wants something more, something daring, something dangerous. For Dominic, cinema is about pushing boundaries and challenging audiences to see the world in a new light. But this wasn't the first time something like this was happening. Now Dominic isn't one to shy away from speaking his mind, and boy does he have a lot to say about the state of the film industry. From Hollywood to indie flicks, he's got critiques for days. One of his biggest beefs? The lack of originality in Hollywood. According to Dominic, it feels like every other movie is just a rehash of something that's already been done a thousand times before. Where's the innovation? Where's the creativity? It's like we're stuck in a never-ending cycle of remakes and sequels, and Dominic isn't afraid to call it out, but that's not all. Dominic has also aimed at the industry's obsession with box office numbers. According to him, too many filmmakers are more concerned with making a quick buck than creating meaningful art. It's a sad state of affairs. So what does Dominic think is the key to revitalizing cinema? Well, it all comes down to one word, authenticity. For Dominic, cinema is at its best when it's raw, unfiltered, and unapologetic. It's about telling stories that resonate with audiences on a deep, emotional level. But here's the kicker. Dominic doesn't just want cinema to entertain. He wants it to challenge, provoke, and inspire. He wants filmmakers to push the boundaries of what's possible, to take risks, and to defy expectations. In other words, he wants cinema to be more than just a way to pass the time. He wants it to be an experience and an art. So what are your thoughts on this? Do you agree with Dominic? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insider buzz.